Design and this is Fawn. Y'all know Fawn, my lovely roommate. If you are new to this channel, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Let me just reintroduce Fawn to the newbies. So, Fawn and I met in initial training. No, we met before that. We met on Facebook for in a on a group page for the airline that's near a list of stuff. Of food to bring me from Texas yeah because she's greedy mm -hmm. um, anyways so we went to initial training together we became friends we moved to New York and now we're roommates great we work for the same airline too some people ask that and yes we do it's flight is fun a flight attendant yes she is all right got that out of the way so what we're gonna do in this video is just a quick update about what's going on as far as work I had mentioned a while ago about things with mint possibly changing and somebody asked me to specifically do this video so I'm doing it just for you on this part then there's a few questions I've been getting so I want to answer some of those questions and then somebody also asked for Fawn to do the flight attendant tag so I didn't tell her we were gonna do that but we're gonna do that what is that um, it's like 10 questions that you just oh, answered. Man. They're quick you knew questions. I would have signed up for this. Nah. So, but the reason I want her to do this, huh? The camera, like you're all the way over there. Like, no, don't get closer. It's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jeez, very hot it's in this like apartment, y'all. Humidity. <gasps> okay. Better? Yeah, it's hot. Um, but the reason I want to answer, I want Fawn to answer these questions is because some of y'all really be coming for her in the comments <laughs> and it's not very nice like <laughs> I mean some of y'all really love her because you've been watching from the beginning so you really know her her vibe and her attitude and personality and some of y'all who watch her the first time are like who is this girl and why is she so dry <laughs> so we're just gonna clear all of that up today all right so what should we talk about first should we just know. dive into the whole mint thing sure when we initially got into Mint, we had the idea in our mind that we were going to be in Mint forever. forever, 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 forever. And basically, Mint is very new to our company. Not very new, but four years, which is still pretty new. Mm -hmm. um, and we treat it very differently than any other airline treats their first class. It's structured very differently as far as who works it. Basically, Mint is its own entire base, and you have to apply to get in, and so on and so on and so forth. So over the past four years, they have trained, they have changed the structure and pay model and scheduling quite a bit. So the people that have been in it have left and come back, and mm -hmm. you know, just a lot of employees were a little indecisive on if they wanted to be in it. They heard good things, they heard bad things. So, anyways. So for that point in time, you know, Mint was always, always hiring people um, and trying, not even hiring people, but just trying to get people to stay in the program, if you want to call it that. But now we're at a point where Mint is very, very good. Like the scheduling is amazing. We get basically eight hours of credit a day, regardless of how much flight time we actually fly. And we only do one leg a day. Um, sometimes we get um, extra money on top of our hourly depending on what position we work so I mean especially if you're a junior flight attendant like us at our company it can be very lucrative mm -hmm. you go from being super broke to just normal broke you know so or you can be making a lot of money if you want to work 150 hours a month fly 150 hours a month and get paid for even more yeah so if y'all understand that, so basically now what's happening is, is that Mint has too many people in the program because everybody finally realized, oh, like Mint is a great thing to do. Um, I want to be in Mint. So it's at the point now where they have made it to where they do commitments and it's basically you either, and this is all based upon seniority, like always in the um, aviation world. 
you either are in mint for the, a full year which is great or you're in here for eight months or break plus eight which is four months off but you go back to core um, and then you do eight um, eight months in mint or you do staggered which is four months on four months off and so forth and so forth so when we did that last video we had um, we did our bid for our commitments and of course we both wanted to be in for a year uh, excuse you New York um, and we're junior. I, in Mint, there is in New York base, there's two bases for Mint. You have New York and Boston. In New York, there's like 360 of us in Mint. I am literally like 10 from the bottom. Like, literally. I'm only like two or three above her. Yeah. So, so we're, we're at the bottom of the barrel. So we didn't get a full year. Mm -hmm. Right? We both got break plus eight, which means we have to take a break from Mint starting November to March and then the next eight months we'll be back in mint and then we have to bid again for our next commitment and so forth so i kind of got lucky well i guess you can call it lucky but i wanted i really wanted to stay in mint throughout the remainder of the year because as you know holidays are coming up christmas you know you're spending a lot of money and i just did not want to go back to core and be on reserve because our class still does not have a line yet so if we go back to core, that means we'll go back to being on reserve, and I didn't want to do that, so I swapped my bid, my commitment, I'm sorry, I swapped my commitment with someone else. They took the break plus eight, and I took their staggered. So I staggered, still don't understand that. Why he did that? I don't know. Shout out to you, Lavelle, because I don't know why you did that. Because I've been trying to find somebody to swap with me, like, yeah. don't you want to help a sister out? Seriously, Nobody so I'll still me. be in Mint until March, and then once March comes, I'll take my break. And the whole reason of doing that is, you know, I'm just praying to the sweet baby Jesus that once March comes, my class will have a line, and I'll leave Mint, and I'll go to back to court, and at least I'll have a line, and won't have to sit 16, 18 days of reserve each month like you do. Oh, God. So, Fawn has to go back to court. Because she didn't find anybody to swap. Nobody really wants to swap. I mean, nobody wants to be in core once you're in mint. Unless you just really have, like, some other things going on. You know, where core does give you a lot more flexibility with your schedule. You have more options of trips and things of that sort. But I think for us, another thing is we can't hold a line. If I could yeah. go back to core and actually hold a line, it wouldn't be so bad. Yeah. If I could control things, but I literally am going back to... Letting, first day of work basically yeah, not even yeah, though yeah, going back tough. now she'll be a senior reserve because we've been be here a year yeah but she has to go back to reserve yeah so that's just what's going on with mint it's still an awesome program we love it i honestly wouldn't change it for the world but that's just you know that's just how our company works that's what they do so we just have to go with the flow we don't really have an option if we had an option y'all know we would stay in all right, so that's the update with me. Let's answer a few questions. Okay. So, Paris vlog just came out. The end of Paris Ooh, vlog just Paris. came out yesterday. Paris is burning, y'all. Paris is burning. <laughs> so, I unintentionally left a cliffhanger, which I did not mean to. Um, and y'all want to know if Fawn made it back safely. Fawn and her <laughs> daughter. Obviously. She's right here. <laughs> Um, they Shout out to Air France, right? They want to know what y'all had to do to get back because it was oh, really long. So um, after Alexia left, um, we were at the gate with the agents, and they were basically telling us that um, Air France's policy is anyone can request a jump seat. Well, let me clear: airline employees, anyone can request a jump seat. Mm -hmm. um, it's not. It's based on there's there's no priority for it so yeah. anybody can request a jump seat and they literally walk down to the plane and ask the captain permission for you to ride the jump seat and so that's what they did they walked down they asked us obviously who we were and I was like you know I work for her company near and dear to her heart and, <laughs> <laughs> and um, they were like okay and um, captain said okay and so 
They gave us me and my daughter, who's yeah. not an airline employee. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So uh, did they just like override said like? They, there's no override. They don't. Their their policies are completely different. Just, like yeah. here, you have to be a flight attendant with mm-hmm. your airline to ride your jump seat. Over there, you can be anybody as long as the captain says it's okay. So um, that's what we did, and we got down and. As soon as we got to the boarding door, he was like, oh, welcome. Once he found out we were airline employees, they yeah. gave us a hug right at the door, um, told us where to put our stuff, which is really crazy because, like, it was, like, emergency equipment. And he was like, here, just put all your bags in there, like, literally on top of the on oxygen tank. Of, so I was just like. Which is a very big no-no. I was just like, oh, my God. The U.S. Airlines. You don't crazy. put nothing in front of emergency yeah, equipment. Yeah, well, all my bags were on top of the emergency equipment, which was crazy to me. But I was like, okay. <laughs> and so, you know. Um, after we started flying, we, um, they took us back to their crew rest area and blocked everything off for us. And we had blankets and pillows and my daughter was really tired. So she laid down. And so their first service is a champagne service. So he bought us champagne and crackers. Nice. Second service was hot meal, three glasses of wine. I'm like, you're letting me drink on the jump seat? Like, this is just not like an airline in the United States. I was stuck in the old middle seat between two. Oh my God. It was great. He was like, oh, you like the wine? Here's a couple more bottles. I was like, okay. (laughs) And then they do a second service, like an hour out before you land. So they give you cheese, more bread. You know the French like bread. So it's more bread, more cheese, more wine, yogurt, orange juice, water. It's like, and that was, that was economy. I didn't even, it was an A380. So we didn't even go upstairs. But Sydney wanted to go upstairs to see what it was like. And I was just, but we were just tired. So I was like, another time. Another time. But, um, yeah, that's how we got home. So, shout out to Air France. Y'all are the GOAT. Absolutely. So, she's back. She's we got safe. in, like, three or four hours after her. Not very long. The next flight. Okay. Sorry. Cliffhanger it. Didn't mean <laughs> to. But she's fine. But I just got my bags back. I didn't even tell them. I don't have oh. my bags. Oh. They didn't even, it's, oh. 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 I don't want to talk about it. silence. <laughs> For the bags. I don't even want to talk about it, y'all. My bags. bags are still in Paris somewhere with a lot of things. So, it is what it is. So, next question. I just got a question on my Instagram. So, I got a message on Instagram from Mr. Anonymous. <clears throat> and the question says, I applied to be a flight attendant at Southwest. They said it could take 12 to 18 months to hear back or more, which is fine. But my question around the background check. From what I'm seeing on Flight Attendant Career Connection, it goes back five years. In my five-year work history, I was terminated from my job. My manager hated me even though I was a top performer. It was a personality conflict. All the advice online says you have to be honest about the reason for leaving the job. Is that true? Also, I mean, and if so, will I not get the Southwest job if I'm other if I otherwise would have if I'm honest? And did disclose the fine. Okay, so he's saying, and otherwise, will he get? Will he not get the job if he's honest and discloses that he was terminated for whatever reason? So, you answer the first, and I'll answer. We might have two different answers. We have two different answers. I mean, I I wouldn't put that I was terminated. I would I would never put that. I don't really know what kind of bearing that has on Southwest application but I I just wouldn't put that I wouldn't set myself up for failure but I mean I get I get the whole being honest thing but you also have to remember that it is a third-party background check it is not Southwest doing the background check they're only calling to verify dates of employment they're not calling to verify whether you quit or were termed because they can't do that. So that's why they ask you. Um, I, I wouldn't. Is that an actual question though? Does it say were you terminated? Yeah, I mean when you when you put reason for leaving. Oh. When you put on oh, your job. I wouldn't job, put terminated. I would put other opportunities. So I don't a hundred percent disagree with her. Do I believe you should be honest? Yes. Because at the end of the day, they technically they're not allowed to ask. But I don't know if that's certain state laws or just or if that's like just like like 
I mean, it's kind of like salary. Around. You can't ask about salary. They can't call and ask what your what your yeah. wage was. So, I mean, I always thought it was across True. the board, but see, and I don't, I don't necessarily think it is across the board. I feel like some people can ask. But do these background check people care enough to ask? I mean, them personally, no. But I don't know. So what I would do, if and yes, you are correct. It, they do. On the application itself, they make you go back 10 years, mm -hmm. but they only actually verify the past five years of where you've been working and things of that sort. At least that's what they did here. Um, and I, I, would, I would assume. The background checks came about, 10 year background check came about because of, uh, I think it was a 9-11 situation and so they kind of wanted to verify your whereabouts to see where you were to make sure you weren't like down in Florida learning how to fly planes into buildings so they kind of wanted to verify that you were actually working at Kmart from this date to that date yeah. and not doing something yeah. else but what they'll only actually call and verify is the past five years that's what they did when we applied for airline near and dear to my heart we put down 10 years they called and verified five and they will call and verify so if you put right. that you were in school if you put that you were unemployed and whoever you contact like these people have to be able to answer the phone um but just as far as term people still get jobs once they've been fired yeah and people still get jobs with with convictions on their record yeah so. absolutely i was just going to touch on that too so airlines are not trust me think about all the employees at an airline all of them are not perfect. I have been terminated from a job before. It is what it is. I, honestly, I don't know what I put on the application. Um, I might have just put other opportunity, honestly. Like, I mean, that's not lying. No, it's not. You know, reason for, I mean, reason for leaving, whatever. Like, you know. But, so I'm just going to say do what you feel like in your heart is the right thing to do because you know if you feel like you lied you're always going to be thinking about this in the background of your mind and anytime you probably get a call from the company you're going to freak out so whatever you feel like is the right thing to do do that but it is not an automatic no right if you have been terminated from a job it's probably going to depend on why um, and honestly, when I got, you know, what is, it's two different terms. It's terminated and what's the other one? Laid off. Laid off. laid off. Yeah. So really, I got laid off from a job just simply because it was, you know, holiday work. You know, okay, we don't need you anymore. Like, move on. You can put, you know, you put those, you put the real reasons for, you know, things going on. Um, but also then just to touch on convictions, like if you do have something on your background, um, that I would always say be a hundred and ten percent honest about because that they can find you know even if it is um, a misdemeanor you still want to go ahead and disclose it um, it will not just automatically knock you out of the job either you know you can still potentially get the job I know of people that have still gone ahead and got the job and they were honest um, I would even almost say a felony because I think it just depends on what it is. Right. If you haven't like, uh, because when we did, when we're doing the background check and they're asking all these things, it has a list of felonies and it'll say, you know, is any of these on your records? And, you know, I'm not going to say a petty felony, but it's nothing like, um, you can look it up on the FAA website. Yeah. It's on there. But it's not like, you know, robbery. Like, I don't think that's on there. It's like the, no, the, the it's crazy like, things like... It's like espionage or terrorism yeah. or have you held your held your uh, flight attendants hostage. It's things yeah. like that. It's, it's like, those type of things that they're really looking for to, you know... The kinda, things that used to happen back in the 80s. Exactly. Like those type of things. And you know the FAA, they take a while to catch up with yeah. stuff. So, so but I mean... pretty much what's on there. We're not 100% versed in all of this. Like, we really don't know the true ins and outs of it. I can only speak on what I've heard from experience. people 
and people that have the jobs and people that don't have the jobs and things of that forth. And it's it's really company dependent too. It really depends on where the company flies. Like yes, absolutely. Her airline near and dear to her heart doesn't fly to Canada, and Canada is really strict on um, DUIs, which. Um, Gucci Mane talks about in his song about how Drake can get him <laughs> in Canada even though he has felonies. So, you know, Gucci Mane couldn't work for her airline near and dear to her heart because he, yeah. you know, has DUIs and stuff like that. But, yeah, exactly. you know, some airlines that don't fly to certain com countries, it's not yeah. as... Not as strict. Yeah. On so it really things. depends. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, I don't really want to talk about that topic no more because it's giving me a headache. Like, it's just way too much to think about. But it's at the end of the day... Yeah. You should always be 100% honest on your applications, but I don't think there's anything wrong with playing with the truth a little bit, using different words to explain your truth so it doesn't look so bad. I mean, it's just like an interview question. Like, if they ask you something you don't have the best answer for it, you know, make it sound better. Correct. That's all. Like, that's, that's really all. So, you'll be fine. Go in there once you get your face-to-face -face with Southwest. Wow them. Don't worry about your petty manager that fires you over personality conflicts. Like, that is what that is. I would not say that. Like, that I would never even say. Better opportunity. Focus yeah. on the positive. Exactly. Ex exactly. Like, just be positive about whatever, whatever it was. Oh, you know, I really enjoyed this job. Um, something better came my way, so I went for it. End of story. <laughs> That's it. That's it, that's it, that's, that's it. it. So I don't really think, like Fawn said, that's not really a lie. You're just omitting some things. That's all right. Be prepared to talk about your experience, though, with that company. Um, Southwest does go over that when they do your interview. They will say, so, we see yeah. you were, you know. And I, I can't, like, be positive, y'all. Like, do not ever go to an interview bashing right. past managers past companies that's not a good look leave it all up. at all just be positive 100 percent positive all the time um all right let's go ahead and do the um flight attendant tag for fun okay first question where are you based um jfk <laughs> you acting all shy <laughs> where are you based boo i am jfk based no and you're not Z21. New York. Okay. I am based in New York. What's your favorite layover city and why? Oh, probably LA. Because I get to see the girl. Yeah, the girl. The girl's my daughter. The girl. The girl. Y'all saw Sydney in the Paris video. The girl. That is Fawn's 18 year old grown daughter that I keep telling her. She's, she's still my baby. Yeah, that part. I keep telling Fawn she's chasing her but let Sydney be, but she wants to go to LA and be with her baby. I do. What's your favorite layover city and why? My favorite layover city right now would be San Diego um, because I just really enjoy the vibes of the city. It's very relaxed, but yeah. still really cute um, and just trendy, you yeah. know, like I really enjoy that. So um, how long have you been a flight attendant? This time? Um, All of it. Oh, God. Um, I started in 1998. She's showing her age, y'all. Uh, 1998 uh -oh. is when I started flying. How long have you been a flight attendant? I have been a flight attendant for one year now. Kudos to me. Is it over? It's a little over a year. My first mm -hmm. trip was July 31st, 2017. Dang, you Today, remember that? Today is August 2nd, 2018, so. Wow. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember where your first trip was? Because I do. I do. You remember where mine was? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember that one. I remember she was like. <laughs> That's how it went. Um, my first trip was very nice. Um, you know, I don't even care. I'll go ahead and tell y'all. Y'all go back and watch. I'll put it up up here but my first trip i had a layover it was a three-day west coast trip from here to long beach and long beach to i think san jose or something yep, like SJC. that sjc sjc and i was very excited about the trip because at the time 
I was dating someone that lived in San Jose and it just it was just great for that to be my first layover so I was very very excited about that and then the next day I had a 24-hour um, Vegas layover so that was really awesome and the next day we came back to JFK so that was my first trip it was a good trip it was a really good trip because I think I had like two deadheads in that trip like Dang. it was a nice trip see, for, to be your to first trip for that. yeah I was like oh yes I get to go see my boo and it's West you know like it was good that's not my boo anymore but Life hack. What is your biggest flight attendant pet peeve? Oh, God. Um, probably the ones that as soon as they step on the airplane, the threshold of the plane, all of a sudden now they need a whole bottle of water one. and they're dying of thirst and they need to take a pill right now as there's 80 other people standing behind yeah. them. I had a lady show me her pills yesterday. Like, yeah. I don't know what you was doing in the airport for three hours, but... It's um, just... It's... And yeah. then, especially in mid now, because as soon as they board, we have every all of our beverages and everything set yeah. up that we're serving to our mint customers. So, they see the water sitting right there. So, you know, they think it's just an, an easy thing for us to give them. Right. Um, and we can't give them that water simply because we have two waters for the front and the back of the plane or whatever. So, but, yes, that part. Um, what is my biggest pet peeve as a flight attendant? TVs. <laughs> <laughs> I had an issue with TVs yesterday, y'all. No, I don't even think it would be the TVs. Honestly, I think it's just lazy flight attendants. Me too. You know, like, I can deal with all things customers simply because that's what I signed up for, like, dealing yeah. with customers. So that doesn't nearly bother me as much as working with a crew member that cannot do their job does not want to do their job half ass does their job like i think that that that, that, that is a serious more than pet anything. peeve the problem with that is like you know when, when we do our briefing in the beginning you set the expectation they know what the expectation is mm -hmm. yet i don't know they think like you're not paying attention or you don't know what's going mm -hmm. on but you know they'll try to like skip certain things during the service or mm -hmm. we're not doing this um yeah yes, you are. are yeah you are yeah so you know it might be the mint in us but i believe standards are set for a reason they are absolutely and they need to be followed you know like and i mean a few of my subscribers has flown with me and this probably just sounds like oh my god alexia you know you're crazy no i'm not like Trust me, when you do the job right, it makes it so much easier on you. So when I fly with people that don't really enjoy their job anymore or probably need to take a day off, and I understand being tired, that's one thing, but when you're just really being lazy, it's a no-go for me. Yeah. What is your favorite thing about being a flight attendant? Um, every day is a different day. Like You just never know what you're going to expect. I love the flexibility. I love the people that I work with. I meet amazing, amazing people. I've made so many lifelong friends throughout this career. People that I've, people, <laughs> people that I was, she hates when I say that word friends, but literally people that I was in training with back in 1998, I'm still yeah. friends with. So yeah. they're, they're friends. They, yeah. they become family and Internet they understand friends. the craziness of this job because nobody else does. Yes. Like talking that to part. a non-airline person is just like, they be looking yeah. at you like, yeah. okay, so the bag wouldn't fit the overhead. No, but you don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand. The bag would not fit. It should have never made it. Okay, so yeah. no. Yeah. I True. need you to have the same passion about this bag True. not fitting in the overhead that I do. <laughs> okay what is my favorite thing about being a flight attendant um i like my uniform too yeah i do yes yeah. our, our uniforms maybe not so stuff. much right now maybe like you know we're doing keto y'all yeah. fonda started i've lost 10 pounds yeah baby um, i probably gained the 10 that she lost <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, my favorite thing about being a flight attendant, probably, you know, I can't really necessarily say so much the making friends part. I enjoy people, but I really enjoy 
my my other friends at home and getting to go home and things like that. Uh, just to travel. I mean, honestly, as cliche as it is, yeah. like right now, I've been getting to travel a lot more and do things. And I think, you know, I've always been very independent, but it's this job has really made me find way more of my independence. I will say that. Yeah. Like, Probably before I started applying, like, I was never one to, like, do stuff on my own. Mm -hmm. This job, you will learn how to do things yeah. alone. Alone. If it's uncomfortable for you, it will become comfortable. Over, yeah. Because, Definitely. like, you will have your slam clickers and you'll be hungry and it ain't nobody to eat with. So, yeah. so it, it kind of forces you to get out yeah, and do more and explore. If you're the explorer type, you know, and I right. am, so. And I'm not. So. Yeah, I, I really enjoy that aspect of it, just being able to get out and do things, even if I'm with or without somebody, like, I'm cool. What did you do before becoming a flight attendant the first and second time? Uh, let's see. So, I was actually a gate agent because I wasn't old enough to fly, but I knew I wanted to fly. So, the first airline that I worked for, um, I was 19 when I got hired. Mm -hmm. And uh, six weeks before my 21st birthday, my third attempt at my in-flight interview, I went from being a gay agent to in-flight. And so when I graduated training, I was finally old enough to fly. Oh, look at God. <laughs> yeah. And Three what about attempts. Before you came back. Before I out. came back, when I was raising the girl and being a wife and all that stuff, um, I worked in advertising. I love advertising just as much as I love flying. And so... I was fortunate enough to actually work for um, a company that does the ads and the floor displays and things like that for all of the airports around the country. So oh. even though I wasn't flying, I was still able to be in the airports yeah. doing advertising, which is great. Well, that's cool. Um, what did I do before becoming a flight attendant? My bachelor's degree is in fashion merchandising. For quite a bit of time from college even then I knew I wanted to be a flight attendant but you know you go to college and you're like let me get a job in my degree in my field blah 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 so I did merchandising um, for a majority of the time Ralph Lauren um, a few other companies and then I got tired of that and then I um, got my real estate license so I've been a licensed realtor for two years um, one year real estate then I went and became a flight attendant and now it's a year later and I'm still a licensed real estate agent um so that's what I did what made you decide to become a flight attendant I also got my pilot's license in that time too now that I'm thinking about it I had a lot going on the pilot y'all <sighs> one day I'll get back to flying um actually the flying look flying yeah <laughs> this thing <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, what was the question? <laughs> Whoa, what made you decide to become a flight attendant? Um, I've just always loved airplanes. Like, I just remember, like, being a kid, and it, my, well, my mom was a flight attendant, too. And mm -hmm. so, I had flight benefits at a very early age, and I just, I just love flying. Plus, the uniforms were cute, too. Yeah. For me... Y'all remember them Southwest uniforms with the go-go go boots and little short skirts? And, no. I want to bring that so. back. Um, what made me want to be a flight attendant? I just, I guess, you know, I'll just say envy. Like, I just always envied the flight attendants on the aircraft from when I was a little girl. I mean, I've been flying since I was three months old. Um, first flight was to Jamaica. Or actually coming back from Canada because my daddy made us drive from Houston, Texas to Canada when I was like three months well, old. Drive. I don't remember this. Obviously, my mother told me this story. Um, and she was ticked about it. So, on the way back, she made oh, him Lord. drive back and she put us on the plane. Um, and then That's hilarious. Jamaica and then just all kind of places. But from as long as I can remember, I always looked at flight attendants in awe. Like it was just a dream job to me. Like as just probably as y'all think about it, just like, oh my God, like awe. Like that's how I felt. Um, and yeah, you know, I kind of put it to the back burner and now I'm here. So, you know, dreams do come true. What is one thing you have to have on your layover? I almost said liquor. She almost means that. <laughs> I, you know what? In all honesty, I can't sleep without Benadryl. Like, I, I have to have Benadryl. I had a San Fran layover. And we got in probably 8, 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. 
and I was probably up by I probably went to sleep about midnight but I was up at five and I couldn't I can't mm. sleep like I, I just have, cannot I sleep issue. yeah she's like a narcoleptic she'd be like Ugh. done not okay. me I, I can't sleep I'm very light sleeper I hear everything like I can't um I need one thing sleep. I have to have on my layovers is my laptop I take it every trip every, everywhere I go one because I use it to edit my vlogs Two, I don't really watch the TV for television. Like even right now, like Ooh. I lay in my bed. I gotta have my fire stick. Oh yeah. But the problem is, and this is how ridiculous I've gotten. I pick my layovers based on which TVs the fire stick works on. That's Cause they don't much. work on all the TVs. That's, that's so. too much. <laughs> and I like to, I like to watch the ID channel and the first forty-eight because I need to know yeah. who the killer is and make sure the killer's not coming in my room. Oh my god. And you know, so I need to know these things. So, I need to know who yeah. the killer is. So my laptop goes every single trip with me. Well, it came to Paris. I mean, every single trip. Every single trip. What has been the most challenging part about becoming a flight attendant? Money. Money. Um, this is also the first time I've ever had a roommate in my life. So... Catch uh, you guys next. Cohabitating has been... <laughs> has been <laughs> cohabitating. It's been a learning experience. I don't know why I waited until I was 25 to decide to get a roommate. I ain't 25. This is the first time. She wants to be 25. I'm 25 in my okay, head. Hey, girl. Um, the most challenging part about becoming a flight attendant. You know, so if you... I would probably have said the money a few months ago. And not right. even because of Mint, but... It, it was bad. It was it was bad, but obviously we survived. My man so. told me he had to call your mama and ask for twenty dollars for a pizza. For a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it, was it was bad. Rough. It was so bad. I remember that oh time God, Ashley tried to use her. She tried to use her health spending card <laughs> to do Uber Eats. Like it just HSA card. Yeah. Um, but I guess right now it would just be like. I, what I've really been battling with the most is being away from home and actually just feeling like you have a home. Right. Because with yeah. all of the travel, I literally tell people now I live in three different areas of I, You know, the that's States. a really difficult question. Like when it's, people ask me where I live, I'm that's just like... That's what we were talking about last night. It's just like, as a human being, you have to have roots right. somewhere. And not roots from like, oh, you from there, but like laid down roots, like where do you consider home? And y'all know I consider Houston home, but this whole year really hasn't felt like home because I'm never there. It's like you're You know, busy. like I don't, I'm never anywhere. I feel like I spend like, a third of the month in each of these different cities like one third of the month i'm in new york one third i'm in houston and one third i'm on the layover in the west coast especially since starting men because that's all i do is west coast so you can always catch me in cali you can catch me in new york or you can catch me in texas so i've really really been struggling with that um our lease here ends in december um and honestly i just want to move back home buy my house and become a real commuter if I have to um, and just like really start setting down roots there like like just I just want to be there like so that has been my biggest struggle I guess you could say because yeah. it's just you know commuting is a choice and you know it's not always easy it's not always the best um, being on reserve commuting can be not that easy not that great um, so yeah, just not really feeling, cause this apartment, I, I never call it home. Like you can't catch that coming out of my mouth. Mm. Um, so it's nice to have, I'm grateful for it, but we did get lucky. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely we got, got lucky. lucky. Um, but that's the biggest struggle for me is just not feeling like I'm grounded anywhere right now. That's, that's the um, best way to put it. I don't yeah. feel grounded anywhere either. And like, literally I'm texting her talking about, I think I'm going to move to Fort Lauderdale. No, I think I'm going to move to Long Beach. No, maybe I'll just stay in New York. Like, I don't know what to do. I yeah. really don't know what to do. I don't and know. it's hard, you know, just because you want it to be convenient for right. you as far as work, but you also want to be around your loved ones and 
just be comfortable. You know, like I have my two my two dogs, my babies at home, and I miss yeah. them all the time, you know. And I just have a life there in Houston, and I I would really love to be able to spend a lot more time there. Um. All right. Last question. What is the best advice you can give to a new hire slash aspiring flight attendant? Save money. Yeah. Be Save frugal. Money. And, and you gonna tell somebody to be frugal? I was gonna say if you're not frugal <laughs> like me, you are gonna learn today. Yeah. Frugal is not my middle name. Yeah. Definitely. That is. I mean, there's so much advice you could give, but honestly, that is the biggest thing if you're becoming a new flight attendant like newer and aspiring that's what it says just stack your cash yeah definitely stack your cash in the beginning all right y'all so that is going to be the end of this video we've been chatting for a good little while so hopefully it's not too long but i hope you all enjoyed it if you have any more questions that you want answered go ahead and feel free just to comment down below or hit me up on my instagram i'll put it right down here and I'll be sure to get back to you. Until next time, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Bye!